Good morning, everybody. Back for another live devotion this morning. Um, as you jump on, I'm curious if there was an extra hour in every day, if there was an extra hour, if you had 25 hours in a day, what would you do with the extra hour? I'm curious. I think we'll get a wide variety of answers for this. If there were 25 hours in a day, what would you do with the extra hour? For me, my answer is simple. I, if anything in a day gets cut for me, it's sleep. I'd probably use that extra hour for sleep because I, I know the benefits of sleep, right? And I, I know that it, it will help me tremendously to sleep more, but I just don't. It's always the thing that gets cut. So if there were 25 hours in the day, I would probably use the extra hour for sleep. And I'm curious this morning, if there were 25 hours in a day, what would you use that extra hour for? Spend more time in the kitchen or read, Katie says. Yeah, what would you use that hour for if you had 25 hours in a day? What would you do with the extra? That'd be a huge gift, right? It'd be an incredible gift. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. 25 hours in a day. What would you use the extra hour for? What would you use the extra hour for? Good morning. Good morning. Reading. Yeah, absolutely. Enriching your life through reading and through reading scripture. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Sleep. Yep, I'm with you, Kristen. That's what I'd pick too. Sleep. That's where I short myself usually. Arts and crafts. Nice. You'd use that energy and time to be creative. Walk or exercise, okay? So it's just interesting to see, right, for all of us, what's the thing that gets cut? Reading, my mom says, okay. Hiking, nice. So, finally learning to play the bass guitar, Dave. <laughs> Dave, you're a pretty good bass player. I'll vouch for you. Okay, we're going to be in Acts 9 again today, as we've been working through the book of Acts. And we're going to look at two different healings that happen. As we said, there's a lot of action in the book of Acts. Two different healings that happen. The first one is a man named Aeneas. Okay, and here's what happens to Aeneas. This is Acts 9, verse 32. It says, Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. And there he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for, get this, eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Okay, all the residents, it says. So everybody who knew this guy, Aeneas, and knew of him, they saw this. They saw that he was walking around. They saw that he was healed. And they all turned to the Lord. So in this first example, we see big, flashy example of, of healing. People are drawn to God's power. They turn to the Lord. Okay, then we see another healing. And this time it's with woman named Dorcas. 36 says, Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please, Come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. 
and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. So we see these two acts of, of healing through Peter, okay? And there's, there's sort of a contrast in this story that we can pay attention to. And it, it's a contrast between Peter and, and these healings that, let's be honest, are flashy, right? Because that's not something you see every day, God's power through healing. But also, Dorcas and her example and how humble it was. It, it says, if, if we look back, um, that she was always doing good works. She was full of good works and acts of charity. Okay, She was humble and she served. And so she's known not for what she said. doesn't talk about that. She's not known... Uh, for her power. She's not known for her status. She's just known for the way that she helps people. Okay? And I think the lesson for us this morning is we don't have to have flash to make a difference. We don't have to have flash to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And honestly, when I think about the people who had the greatest impact in my life, they weren't the flashiest people. Okay? It wasn't the most, we talked about this a few days ago, who's the most famous person that you met? Is that the person who made the greatest impact in your life? The people that I think of who made the greatest impact in my life are the people that just poured into me and, and served me humbly. Okay, and, and anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. And you see people, all kinds of people who knew Dorcas when they, they see that she's passed away. They're, they're weeping and, and they're sad. She made such an impact in their lives. And then how much they rejoice when she's healed. Okay, so to make a difference in the kingdom, you don't have to be loud, uh, you don't have to be smooth, and you don't have to be the smartest. You just have to serve. Right? It's, it's a heart thing. When we line our hearts with God's heart, we can make a huge impact for the kingdom. And sometimes he might use us in flashy ways, uh, but a, a lot of times not. And sometimes those are the most powerful moments. Okay? God just has to be first in your heart, and then you let that take you where he wants it to. So let's pray. God, we thank you for the incredible way that you worked through ordinary people throughout scripture and throughout the book of Acts. Lord, when we're feeling overwhelmed by your calling, remind us of how simple it is to make a difference. Remind us of the ways that you've gifted us to make a difference and help us to, to influence people simply through kindness and being Jesus to them. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for hanging out this morning. We'll be live again tomorrow morning, so don't miss out. We're live here every weekday, 9 a.m. God's blessings, and we'll see you soon.